Hi everyone, welcome to the Pensioner Adventurer. Um, <clears throat> so today's video is really around um, things I wish I knew um, about uh, my total hip replacement before I had it done. So things that I could have prepared better and, and just stuff that I, I wasn't aware of. Okay, so uh, it, I've got a sort of a, a cheat list here so, so I don't forget anything um, and just so I can try and share, share the main points. Um, so uh, one of the, uh, when I went to see the uh, consultant who did the, um, the operation after, um, after six weeks, six weeks after the operation, we were reviewing um, a uh, x-ray that he took about um, that was taken two days after the uh, the x-ray and uh, sorry two days after the operation and um, he said uh, to me I don't think I could have done it, uh, the operation any better than that and and I explained why well I thanked him because um, obviously I'm pretty grateful that it, it was one of the came up really well but um, and he he then thanked me for for actually turning up being relatively slim. Now I, I asked him what the um, what difference it makes, and what he said was if if you're overweight, it's harder to get the alignment right when they fit the replacement hip, and therefore you know the outcomes sometimes are not so good. So um, fortunately, I had lost weight, and if you followed this. Uh, series this playlist there's a video where I talk about that a little bit so really I think one of the uh, the big things is to uh, if you're carrying a few extra pounds to or kilos depending on what you what you measure yourself in um, it may well be worth trying to uh, shed a few pounds uh, before your operation okay so that's uh, let me tick that one off the next one um, is the time of year of your operation. Now I know it sounds mad and, and I just took mine whenever they offered me it because the pain I had in my hip was pretty pretty advanced by then and, and uh, I just wanted it done. But now I know the steps that I had to go through for, for the re, uh, post operation recovery and walking was a big, uh, a big factor in it. I think it would have been so challenging doing it during the winter months, you know, when things are icy and such like. So I know, um, I, well, all I'm really trying to say is if you can, if there, if there is a possibility to uh, schedule yours at a, at a, you know, a given time of the year, I would definitely go for somewhere where you're recovering in the summer months then that, that really does make walking you know without the fear of slipping over because it's you know uh, icy or it's raining or, or whatever um, but it is a hard one to um, to to arrange because when you get in when you need a hip to be replaced you definitely just want it done you know so that one now those two I would say are pretty much um, um, what I would class as pretty important and, and if there's a way you can find a, a way to do those I'm sure it will benefit you. Okay so number three on my list here is plan your, your walking routes in advance. Now uh, I got up to after six weeks of walking two miles um, twice a day and uh, without any uh, crutches or anything. Now um, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you over and just show you, I've drawn it on a, on a blackboard here, just to show you the sort of logic that I use. Now I know everyone are not going to you know, be fortunate enough to have um, a route similar to mine, but all I did was I, I was very conscious of getting um, stranded you know I did the walking on my own and the last thing I wanted to be was that you know mile and a half away from home and not be able to walk back 
So really the principle of what I'm saying is, is trying to find a route that you can build upon, but also have exit routes to get you home if, if you start to get in a bit of trouble. Because, uh, you know, you it is a major operation and you do get tired and, you know, most of us are old old people who have, have it done. So, you know, it's, um, it, it's really good to plan. We'll we just walk over there now and I'll show you. Okay, so this is a bit of a, a, a mad sort of street plan, I'm not sure how I can... So you can see my little house down there in the bottom left hand corner. So basically the chalk marks were all uh, where, where I could walk. So I would come out, first of all I just came out and walked up and down there. And then I sort of went round the block and then when I went a little bit more, no I think I went that way. So I just increased it. And then I went like that and then round. And then as I got stronger, I came out onto the bigger loop. But what I did, I always had, so I used to actually, I would come up here and walk round here and round here. And then if it started to get tired, I could go in there and get home. Or if I went up there, I had a way, a way back home, you know. So, I could, so or the, the point I'm really trying to make is if you can plan a route where you've got exits and you don't, the last thing you want to be is, I'm trying to work my finger here, sorry, to be up here and, you, and, and you're just knackered and you somehow you've got to try and get home and it's a long way. And if you haven't got anyone to call or you, you know, or even if you're knackered and you've got someone to call sitting there hanging around waiting for them, you know. Because basically, if you're tired, you want to sit down, and you can't really sit down on the on the on the pavement, can you? So anyway, if you can plan a route, that's probably uh, my top tip there. All right, we go back to the. Uh, I can talk about the other ones. Okay, so that was that uh, that one on the uh, plan and you walk in. Let's find the next one. What I've got. Oh yeah, so um, one of the uh, things that I found that. So we raised the height of all my uh, furniture, so so it was easy to get up. And if you've not seen that, I think that's in the um, one of the videos. I'll put a link up in the in the top now, and you can have a look at that. Um, but you raise it up so it's easy to get in and out without putting undue pressure on your uh, your hip for the first uh, six weeks. Now. I, it's very easy to be tempted into doing just one chair and think oh, I'll sit in that one all the time. But actually I found it was, I needed different, two, two or more different places to sit during, during the, uh, the times when I was resting. So I think it, it, it's important to try and make more than one, one place that meets all the height requirements and such. Because, uh, yeah, sitting in one chair forever does drive you mad, you know, and um, so, because really during those first six weeks my basic sort of routine was do my exercises, do my walking and rest as much as possible, you know, and so you are sitting down a lot, so it's important to have somewhere or more than one place where you're very comfortable. Um, so that's one, so let's tick that one off. Um, well, the other thing is, I think yeah, you you should treat the um, uh, the first six weeks like a job, and 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 be, you know I know after four weeks I was going feeling pretty good and pretty mobile, and to be true for had I still been working, you know, if I hadn't have retired, I would have been tempted to go back to work, and I think it's a really dangerous thing to you know. To contemplate, we all know, you know, workers survive without you, even though we might not like to think it, but you you just need to concentrate on looking after yourself. So those first weeks really just, you know, make it like a job. Your job is to get better, to recover fully. So, you know, uh, like I've just said, you know, get yourself a routine, you know, get up, do your exercises, do your walk rest, do your second walk in the afternoon or all your exercises throughout the day. I think I was doing them three times a day. 
So, so it's really that that's your routine, and just keep keep it at that for that six weeks and let yourself recover properly. Because I think if you mess it up, it, you it's not a, not good, you know. So that's the job one. Uh, well, I, and really, I've covered the other one about have a routine. You know, um, what I did do, the only thing I did sort of do, which I haven't spoken about, was uh, so I would wake when I when I woke up. I didn't have any alarms because I just thought it's a major operation. I want my body to re have as much rest as it needs, so I didn't have an alarm. I would get up. I would do my exercises, do my walk, lay down, ele elevate my feet, um, put ice packs on to try and reduce the swelling and, and, and that was basically it and just repeat that throughout the day and then um, yeah yeah it really works well. I, I try to add you know be a bit more flexible but I, I found I wasn't making as much progress so really you know work out a routine and stick with, stick with that. Now this is this is a real one that um, you know be, be under no illusion that you you're not going to be in pain when you get home. You know you take all the medication, but you, you're still going to be in pain. And one of the things that I had to do is I could lay on my side, but I had to sleep with a pillow between between my legs. So and I hadn't I just knew I had to do it, and I hadn't practiced it. But actually, it's quite well, it was quite alien for me. So not only was I dealing with, you know, the lack of movement initially when I got home after a couple of days from the hospital, I'm also trying to learn how to sleep in a different way. So I would really try and practice, if that's what your doctor or whoever's told you that you have to sleep with a pillow between your legs for six weeks, then you, you should um, practice it in advance because then you at least you're familiar with that and you're not dealing with that as well as the operation so yeah I really wish I had I'd done that one because it was yeah it wasn't brilliant you know um, oh yeah I've got here walking is not the only goal now I'd got on my head let's just get the walking done you know I did the exercises but I was more interested in the walking and the I think the downside is, you know, when you think of any walk, you've got a fairly limited range of movement. So actually doing the exercises and building that strength up in a, you know, around your new hip is important. So I, I'm now doing, I have a daily exercise routine and I'm seven months after my, you know, I have my hip done, trying to equalize the strength on, on both, you know, both sides. Um, so, yeah, don't don't give up on the uh, the exercises. You know, walking's clearly a big goal because we all do it all the time. But definitely, just keep keep going with those other exercises to build 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 muscle around around your new hip and build uh, flexibility um, around there as well. Okay, so that's the uh, walking there. Done that one. We're getting there, guys. Um, next one. Ditch your old shoes. <laughs> no, I'm murder. I've got those old shoes. That I, you know, we all got an old comfortable pair of shoes we like to wear. But if they're sort of slightly uh, worn out, really, and the soles are very uh, smooth, just throw them away before you have your hip done because you want a bit of grip. Because I found it was quite, uh, what's the word, sort of disconcerting that when I walked and I, I became quite nervous that I was going to slip and I tried it with a pair of these old comfortable shoes and I, and, and it was even worse so just throw them away and oh you, I guess you could save them until you're truly better but even so you know so I'm seven months down the road and I'm still more comfortable with some shoes with some uh, grip so yeah think about that just just throw them away treat yourself to a new set new hip, new shoes. Um, recovery aids. Now I made a video on that and I'll put the link up in a minute. The only really, uh, the things under my bed that to raise it up and my chairs where I sat down during the day, 
super important. Raise your loose seat up, um, that's important. The rest of them, the, the, the little grabber thing was quite good. Um, uh, I didn't use it that much. And the, um, the sock puller thing, I think in the video I showed too, the cheap one worked fine. Um, so I wouldn't spend a lot of money on all these gadgets that everyone's telling me. Well, it, I didn't need many. Um, so, but it doesn't mean you you won't. But ice packs as well, they're they're important to have to be able. To, but I I think in that video I show some special one. It wasn't it wasn't any better just than a normal ice pack. So I wouldn't go spending lots of money on things that marketers are trying to make you buy because you think it's going to help you. But, yeah, yeah. Okay, so recovery age. We've done that one. No pain medication. Now, clearly you want it at the beginning, but unless you actually start to wean yourself off a bit, you don't know whether things are getting better or not. If you just, you know, you you just re if you dose up so high, clearly you're never going to know whether things are are getting better or not. So, just have a plan to move down. You know, downwards. You can always up it again a bit, but but there is a bit of pain, but you know, I think I would, I forgot, yeah, after three weeks, um, just just over three weeks, I was off, off them all, you know, so um, so it's not like you're gonna need them forever, you know, the wounds heal and, and that's pretty, uh, pretty good, yeah. Okay, um, right, the other, um, the other thing is I've got here, be competitive, but only with yourself. Now, I'm murdered as far as being competitive, really. And one of the things that um, uh, one of the things that an acquaintance of mine told me was he was off all pain medication by three weeks. So then I had it in my mind. Well, that means I'm going to be off it in 20 days because I want to be better than him. But it's crazy, you know, it's crazy being competitive with anyone else. Just be competitive with yourself. So you want to just try and get a little bit better, you know, and improve, improve your recovery, your walk and your exercises, you know. And so, yeah, don't get drawn into thinking you're the only, all you want to see is a gradual improvement. Doesn't matter what the stories anyone else has told you, it's all about you. Just, just start to, you know. My my goal is like pre progressive overload. That's a technical term. Is that what I'm going to try and do? Is I'm trying to make sure I can do something today, and I still can do it tomorrow, or maybe a little bit more. But I don't want to go back. I'm not going to do so much today that I can't do something tomorrow, and that's it. But but just compare it with yourself. No one else. Yeah. Um, but this is, I don't think I've, I've just popped into my mind and I don't think, um, I haven't got it on the, on the notes. But, um, but it has, one thing I did do, once the scar's healed up, <coughs> you've got a nice, nice scar, scar on your, on your backside. Where, well, it depends where you have it done. But once it's healed up, you can, you can sort of massage it just by pushing on it. And all I did, you can put a, bit of cream or whatever it just just so and every day I just did that and what I was trying to do is break down a scar tissue just so what I didn't want was this big scar so when I started moving it became hard hard to um, you know it, it was fighting against me actually you know the range of movement and so every day it, you you need to wait till your scars you know everything's healed up and if you've had stitches in there, or you've got stitches, they're taken out and everything's good. But just slowly massage it, and over time, mine became very flat and very flexible. And so then that, so there's all the exercises I do, and I ride the bike and stuff. And when I'm walking, I never get a feeling of the where the scar is it it pulling. So, so that's a good one to to. To remember just to do that because then I think that will um, put you in good stead. Right, let's have a look. 
so they're all the things that I had on my list so these are things just I wish I'd known before because well some of them I did prepare but more by accident than than uh, you know than a plan really um, now this is the last one in all this series of uh, before my hip replacement and there's another playlist and I'll put, put it up there now where I'm just charting just giving little updates um, I've just uh, one on uh, after six months and I I did say I was going to do it at 18 but I'm going to do it at a year because I see the doctor again the consultant the surgeon so I'm going to do with that at a year and then then after that it'll be every year so then you can just see how you know the lessons I've learned along the way and um, how things are, are progressing you know and hopefully it might be of help to you so yeah that's about it so um, now we've done all this uh, and so I've done the post stuff and the pre pre hip hop and uh, and new hip new life that's the 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 updates on that we can now start to make some videos of me getting out and about and doing things so thanks for all your patience and um, stay happy strong and healthy and uh, be adventurous cheerio